Hello Blocky Adventurers and welcome back to the Better Minecraft Survival Series. When I was planning this episode I had something totally different in mind, but I realized we haven't done a lot of exploring in this series. So I got prepared, made a few tools and we are going to explore the world today. We haven't done a lot of exploring so far in this series, but today we will take it further and see if we can find a few interesting structures. But before leaving on our exploration expedition, I wanted to trade with our villager first. So Rosalind gave us quite a few trades. I used up all my emeralds. And eventually we got Rosalind leveled up quite far. Not maximum yet, but this will do for now. I also had a nice little playing session with our friend, the Dark Wolf. We finally came to a decision on what we would name our friend. Thank you to one of my subscribers for suggesting the name. We went with Shaky Bone. Yeah, our friend has been named. Shaky Bone it will be and forever be playful and protect our base. Now it was time to sleep. Tomorrow we will explore. The next morning I was eager to start exploring but I came across a creeper. Now since he didn't creep up on me he wasn't much of a danger but he did blow a massive crater in our fields next to the tavern. I started exploring and came across a snail who seemed to be very scared of me because he crawled into his shell as soon as I got near. And then, just as I turned my back, he came back out. We saw a lot of deer running around in the forest, but they were re running really quickly. And they didn't seem to be friendly towards me. More scared, I think is the right word. But I continued running through the forest. Amazed at all the beauty surrounding me, and I saw another deer, and I thought, let's walk up to it slowly, not scare it. But it must have smelled me in the wind, because as I got closer, it suddenly ran off very erratically. I continued up to the river and found a few birdies playing in the water. While listening to their song, I was amazed at the surroundings and stared into the river, across the river, and wondering what else was I going to find. Hello birdies, I love your song, please continue singing it. See ya! I continued on and I noticed that there's a lot of bridges generating in this world. But this little wooden one wasn't much to look at, so I just ran past. Not very far further, I came across this amazing looking bridge. Solid and sturdy, made of cobblestone. It really looked that it belongs across the river. I took the opportunity to go up into the bridge and find a higher vantage point so that I can look at the surroundings and to the left I noticed bamboo growing and that was certainly one of the items that I needed to collect as is very useful. I continued on across the river and finally found a small little structure hidden between some mushrooms. Now when I got closer to this structure I noticed a spawner hanging in it. Now I wasn't going to break any of these spawners because as you know my motto is to preserve 
the surroundings. And besides, this spawner could come in handy one day if I could remember where it is. Because this one looks like it's a zombie villager spawner. This could be really handy in the future. I finally made it to where the bamboo is growing and was amazed at the cotton sakura grove biome. I collected a few pieces of sugar cane because I don't think I've got a lot down at the base. I continued on towards the bamboo but just had to stop and take in the sights. This is such a beautiful biome with the leaf particles floating around. As I run past the bamboo, I chopped down one of the stalks and collected it. I didn't need much because bamboo grows really quickly and it's really, really easy to farm. Continuing along, I saw quite a few foxes in this biome as well. The sun was starting to set and I needed to find a place to lie down and have a nap. But when I looked to my right, I noticed another item that I haven't collected yet. There were pumpkins, almost as orange as the foxes. I had to collect a few. And as I did, night came and it started raining. So I needed to find a place to sleep. And I looked around and saw a well with a few lanterns and I thought having light around would be safest for me to sleep. I went to the well, placed down my sleeping bag and had a nap. I got woken up by an ant? Really? Anyway, let's get on with it. I decided to collect a few saplings as the point of the exercise of coming to explore was to find structures but there doesn't seem to be any structures close by. However I did find this bear which looked really cute but I didn't want to risk going close to it. It might just attack me. I'm not sure you can let me know. Are they hostile? You never know. These foxes seem to like the bear. Further along I decided to kill some of these boars because they do give leather and pork chops and leather was an important resource that I needed to start collecting. There are backpacks in this mod pack and I really want to start getting a backpack going. Using bundles to carry things just isn't on. I went to the dark oak forest to chop down a dark oak tree so that we can collect those saplings as well. This one gave me quite a bit of wood and also a few saplings. Running along back towards where we found the zombie villager spawner because I wanted to explore in that direction I decided to chop down these two trees next to the spawner as well and then my axe broke and now you can see that when your axe breaks it leaves a odd shaped tree hanging in the air. But I took my other axe and started chopping down the tree using some manual labor and getting some exercise early in the morning. This just made me remember why I do like the falling tree mod that is included in this mod pack. The next tree played along and the axe took the whole tree with one log. That was awesome and it dropped quite a few extra saplings for my collection. I found more of these boars and um, I decided to just take them out. Now the thing with them is the first heat they are really waiting for you to eat them. After the first eat they try to attack you and then they run away and they do run really really fast and I had to chase this one 
for quite a bit before I was able to take it down. Kept running and running and running, leading me over rough terrain, and I was scared that maybe it's going to lead me into a deep dark hole. But eventually I caught up with it. Or I thought I did. And then it ran further towards the river, and finally I got the death stroke in. Along the travels I came to this little encampment, which had a few villagers caged up. The villagers was protected, or kept hostage, by pillagers. And this one, I had my shield, and it was no match for me. I quickly took it out, because I knew they must be protecting something. The two villagers in the cages will have to stay patiently in their cages for a little while longer. I might come back at some point to get them. But first, I had to look in this chest. And what a treasure trove of items. Gold, iron, arrows and emeralds. This was such a good haul. But before I could take any of it, I had to clean out my inventory. And this is exactly what I'm saying. Why I do need to get some leather for a backpack. The bundles are nice and all, but they don't work as well as a backpack. But I continued stacking all my loose items into the bundles just to clear out a little bit of inventory space. Next up I thought I could take all the hay bales. I did get rid of the pillager so they're not going to need it and the villagers are caged up. They won't be able to get to it anyway. I continued on exploring and in the spruce forest I fell down a little holy in the floor and when I got out of the hole I notice the mine entrance. This looks so cool. But the point of this session was not to go exploring inside any structures. I only want to find a few structures and maybe mark them on the map or something. Keep the coordinates handy so that we can come back to it. This one looked really interesting. Looking down the ladder I saw it went down, not too deep, but I was intrigued by the bricks at the bottom of the hole. I would mark it and come back to that, but first I needed to find a safe space to sleep as the sun was already setting on this day. I took a break to admire my surroundings again. I have to say this mod pack has such beautiful biome generation. I can't say it enough. Crossing over the hill I noticed another bridge and I thought I could just as well have a nap on the bridge. That would be safe enough and it hasn't been night long enough for any creepies to spawn. So ends the next day of our travels, but tomorrow I will continue. The next morning we went right back to running through the forest and looking for animals to eliminate. The first one found was quite easy to get rid of. It got stuck against the hill. The second one though, let's just say it had me running for a bit. But eventually we got him and we continued on. We found an altar which, even though it looked very good and promising, it failed to deliver on the front of the loot. We went for a swim, which is always amazing, considering I'm wearing a full suit of iron armor. That is a sign of strength for you. But eventually, we came upon some enemies, and we had to deal with them. The first four quickly saw me hiding in the tree 
and came right at me. But I wasn't scared. I felt well protected where I was. Then we took one on, on long range and my final arrow hit the spot solid. And then it was time to have a look at what these guys were protecting. Now this chest had a few nice items, but nothing special. A few pieces of gold, an iron, and a name tag. My inventory was getting flooded, so we would need to think about heading home sometime soon. But first I'll have to have a nap. I started the next morning with a boat trip across the river. And eventually we came upon another structure. This tower looked really, really interesting. But the nasty mobs lurking around it scared me a little bit. And I realized that I wasn't equipped to take it on yet. I will have to come back to it at a later stage when I have better equipment and maybe some more powerful weapons. But right next to it was something that I thought I could take on. This looked like some sort of temple. A jungle temple? Not quite. This one was made of wood, not stone. But I thought, let's take it on. And let's see what's inside. Maybe we can get some good loot. First I got to the levers and I wasn't in the mood to try and figure out the puzzle. I could never figure these out. And I know they are probably not that complicated. But I decided to just go ahead and break my way in. There surely has to be a chest or two inside. But I was going to take everything from this temple. All the rails, all the redstone, all the everything that it has to offer. Even though my inventory was getting quite stuffed, I was sure that I could make space for whatever is available to take home with us. Turning the corner I could see a trap, but I was sure at this point I have broken so much of the redstone that that trap should be pretty much disabled. And it wasn't going to bother us too much, but still I was careful to stay out of the direct line where this dispenser was pointing, just to stay out of its way. When I opened the dispenser, there was a quite a few air arrows of poison. But I wanted to see what's in the chest below it. So I had to break it to open the chest. The chest had a few nice goodies. This multi-shot book would come in handy. A few pieces of iron and some emeralds. And this amazing looking spikes. Maybe we could build a trap with them. I will have to figure out. But at this point, the inventory has started to become a real mess. If nothing else, I assume there must be at least some redstone behind these levers. But when I broke in, I noticed that there are two chests. More loot that I couldn't carry. But we had to make a plan to take as much of it as possible. So sorting through my bundles, I made space and took everything that I thought was of value and then made my way back outside. But night has caught up with us and I had to sleep inside the temple for the night. The next morning I woke up with a visit from a very nasty local trying to cause me harm but I dealt with him. And I made my way back home. Through the forest and across the rivers, 
jumping into the water and seeing nothing new but my mind was just set on getting back home to store my loot. We finally made it back home but I felt that I haven't done exploring yet. I wanted to go back out in the world to explore some more but we had to drop off our loot first. So I think in the next episode I will continue exploring. And since I got such nice loot this time around from enchanted books to emeralds, golden iron and a few other nice tidbits I thought it would be perfect to continue exploring in the next episode. So I hope you enjoyed this one and I hope I'll see you again next time. You must have a lovely day and goodbye.